I had a peaceful childhood. Or at least I thought I did. It was colorful, warm, safe, and happy. Just like any other child, I was worried about not being a horrible daughter so that my mom wouldn't yell at me, or breaking a vase in the house so I don't get a punishment for the next two months, or even picturing that I'm an absolute angel so that she would buy me my favorite toys. But unfortunately, everything changed unwillingly in an instant when the Syrian war started in 2010. At the beginning of the Syrian war, around 40 missile-like weapons, mortars, were fired at the city of Aleppo every single day. Its bullets felt like a rain on a stormy day, going left and right, randomly scattering through humans and buildings and anything they meet. I faced lots of those bullet rainfalls until that one rainstorm that made my life start a new sentence without finishing the previous one. I survived a major mortar in 2012, where I saw dozens of people dying, hundreds getting wounded, but I survived. For the first time, I asked myself, why did I survive? Why did I have the chance to live? What's so special about me? Why did I survive? This is what went inside my mind back then. And now I know that it's called the survivor's guilt. Survivor's guilt is a psychological phenomenon in individuals who have survived a traumatic event while others did not. According to the American Psychological Association, those feelings can manifest in various ways, such as questioning why I was the one to survive while others did not, feeling responsible for the death of others. Its intensity and duration can vary depending on the individual, the nature, and other factors. It's something that we don't often talk about, and it's something that most of us view as a curse and a point of grief. After that incident, my dad immediately sent me, my mom, and my older brother to another city, Latakia, in Syria, to be safe and to have another chance to live. Now, you may think that I completely moved on, right? Since I moved to another city. But it did not work quite like that. I started seeing nightmares and flashbacks. I was constantly consumed by the day of the incident, which impacted my daily activities and overall functioning. Sadly, I started to believe that I had to live with those emotions all my life without seeing the colors of the rainbow again. Normally, we're thought that after rainstorms, there is a rainbow. But after my storm, there was no rainbow. I'm very peaceful in my being. This may come from the root of my name, Mir, which in Russian means peace. I even lost that peace within me. And it did not only affect my inner one, but also my surroundings, in which, in all that chaos, my mom detected it. And as the person that experienced the incident with me, it was easy for her to detect the reason for my strange behavior. She started to slowly and gently talk to me, made me talk about everything, in which she understood what was happening under the covers. Through sharing what I was experiencing, I felt nothing but peace, safety, and normality. Through my mom, one of the crucial ways I learned to deal with the survivor's guilt is to allow and accept the feelings when they come. It's okay and even normal to feel guilty or conflicted about your survival, especially when others were not as fortunate. Suppressing or denying your feelings can lead to many mental health problems. Through sharing with a professional or someone that's very dear to you, you start to acknowledge that your feelings are valid and natural. My mom explained how different situations can happen in life and that from each experience, we learn and we take them with us. And in such cases, we even accept them as part of us. My teenagers started to be better than my bittersweet childhood. 
It was more of a balanced scale of flashbacks and growth where I had my mom as a listener and supporter in this journey. Thanks to her, I started to understand that in life, things do work out for the better. For such a short period of time, everything felt less overwhelming until another wave hit me. It's the war that occurred here in Armenia. I started to slowly retrieve those thoughts, the feeling of seeing young people and even elderly experiencing tough times, dealing with loss of lives, and even seeing young ones getting hurt. Again, my questions start appearing. Should I have been in a different place? Why was I fortunate enough to not be in war zone? Should I have done something to prevent them from getting hurt? And constantly you have those thoughts in your mind of whether you should have been a factor of change. Now, we're back to the beginning of the cycle, aren't we? Sharing your emotions with someone does help. But when I started reliving everything all over again, I knew I needed a different approach. And this time, I was older, wiser, I had a computer, and I was aware of this world's resources. I have done my research and came to the following conclusion, that I need to be mindful of the events that happen in life. Now, what do I mean by being mindful? I started to understand how to run my thoughts and realize that I'm in this cycle or repeating loop where I struggle to deal with or even get out from. In such cases, I started on how to first focus on the positive qualities rather than dwelling on the negative aspects of the situation. I noticed how putting the emphasis on the present moment and the current location you find yourself in helps in reducing the flashbacks, therefore reduces the guilt and brings you back to the present moment by focusing on your surroundings. Mind mapping played a huge part in this phase as well. Through creating a visual representation of your thoughts and the reality that you're in, I was brought to the following central idea, that you cannot control what happens out there. You cannot control what happens with you and you cannot control the reality of the situations and the way they occur. As a human, your first and foremost responsibility is to live. And if there is anything that you can control, is to try your best to live. Facing death and being one step closer to losing everything you have makes you find a way of making your life more meaningful and purposeful just for having the opportunity to own your next breath. So you just start to be grateful. And this was a game changer for me. Gratitude starts to have a huge impact on your way of thinking. And automatically, you start to shift your ongoing loop into a frame of thoughts and feelings that you conclude each and every one of them with just, I'm grateful. My journey of being grateful started, and it helped me to build connections between my thoughts and identify new possibilities. When I was crowned as Miss World Armenia in 2021, my residents started meeting people of different ages, children, women, men, and elderly through my Beauty with a Purpose project. I met many individuals who as well dealt with the survivor's guilt and have been exposed to wars. My attention shifted from self-focused experience into them. It immediately created positive emotions since we were able to counteract the negative emotions associated with our survivor's guilt. And that's when I realized how support groups and peer networks can be valuable resources for survivors of trauma. And in fact, it is a key factor in healing. Through sharing my experience with other survivors, I felt I radiated hope and life and the hopelessness and the worthlessness that I felt for so many years, it all made sense. I had the answers of why did I survive and had the chance to live? I found meaning in what I have lived through and realized that survivor's guilt gave me a gift through doing good for others, which was a turning point in this journey. I started to see the colors of the rainbow, remember, that I was waiting after my storm. 
Hence, I tried my best to explain to other survivors how their guilt can turn into a positive force in their lives. But even after finding the answers to my questions, it's still here. I feel it. I hear its nagging voice with every drop of rain that falls from the sky. That's why it will never leave me. But now, we have tools to cope with it. Through allowing and accepting the feelings when they come, being mindful of the events that happen in our lives, and through doing good for the people around us. We should also know that we don't get over or move on from our trauma. We are forced to make space for it. We carry it, and we even learn to live with it. And sometimes, we thrive in spite of it. And other times, our survivor's guilt can give us a gift, the gift of appreciation and gratitude in the most unexpected ways that you choose how to see them. Therefore, it can be seen in various ways, whether it's full of non-materialistic gifts, such as having the motivation to do good, appreciating life more fully, and even developing personal growth and resilience in the simplest, and most complex situations, regardless of how long they might take, but hope, be sure, and believe that after our rainstorms, a rainbow is the one to appear. Thank you.